These three men are quietly escaping from prison using wooden keys, which they spent a whole year crafting. This is a completely true story that happened in 1979. Tim and Lee were close friends, both sentenced to 12 years in prison for their mission against racial discrimination and fighting for the rights of black people. They were taken to the Pretoria political prison. On their first day here, they were surprised that everyone recognized them because everyone knew what they had done. They admired them, especially Dennis, who had been imprisoned here for a long time as a political prisoner. When Tim and Lee mentioned their plan to escape, Dennis said it was impossible and took them for a walk to show them why. He explained that the walls and fences here were over 20 feet high with sharp spikes at the top, and there were huge floodlights constantly illuminating every corner 24-7, not to mention the guards who were always on patrol. In essence, there was no way for anyone to escape from here. Right after that, Tim went into the restroom to retrieve something. It turns out that before going to prison, Tim's wife had secretly given him some money, which Tim had hidden in his rectum. He then asked Dennis to hide the money inside a toothpaste tube and stash it away. A man named Leonard overheard Tim and Lee discussing their escape plans and expressed his desire to join them, offering assistance if needed. So, the three of them began plotting their escape from there. Tim stared at the keyhole on the door every night, wondering how to open it. Not long after, he finally came up with an idea. He placed a white sheet of paper over the door lock and used his finger to trace the outline of the keyhole. Then, he used a pencil to sketch the shape of the key. The next step was to roll a piece of paper and insert it into the keyhole, then add a pencil to press into the rolled paper. When he pulled it out, the rolled paper had two folds representing the length of the key, and now he had to find out the key's shape. During mealtime, Leonard deliberately spilled food so that Tim could discreetly observe the shapes of the keys that the prison guards had. When playing ball, Tim would intentionally run towards the iron fence to continue his observations of the keys. Even during the lineup to return to their cells, he had good opportunities to observe. Using his memory, Tim began sketching the keys held by the guards. In this way, Tim completed drawings of 15 key shapes, but the challenge now was to figure out what materials to use to create them. All the prisoners here had to work in a carpentry workshop, so when Tim finished his shift, he secretly collected some scrap wood and glue. He rolled them into a sandpaper and hid it in the bottom of his water jug, using it to carry the wood scraps outside. However, after each shift, the prison warden would inspect their jug by shaking it and pouring out a bit of coffee. Seeing that Tim seemed tense, the suspicious warden poured out all the coffee and shook the thermos vigorously, but he still couldn't hear any noise inside. That was because Tim had carefully inserted a piece of cloth inside. Late at night when everyone was asleep, he began crafting the key. He used a knife to create grooves and then used sandpaper to smooth them. Once the key's body was complete, he used glue to reseal it and placed it inside a light bulb to dry. The next step involved using a file to create the teeth of the key. Finally, he successfully fashioned the key. To check if it worked, Tim inserted the key into the lock and gently turned it. Indeed, the door opened, bringing immense joy to Tim. However, there was another door in front of him, and this one could only be opened from the outside. The next day, taking advantage of the cleaning routine in the hallway of their cell block, Tim attempted to use the key to unlock the door outside his cell, with Leonard standing guard outside. After a few tries, Tim successfully unlocked the door but in his haste to remove the key, it broke and got stuck inside the lock. At that moment, the sound of approaching footsteps from a prison guard became audible. Tim tried every possible way to retrieve the broken part of the key stuck in the lock, but failed. The guard was getting closer with each passing second. A fellow inmate threw a small knife to Tim just in time, and he managed to extract the broken key just as the prison guard appeared. After that, they discussed how to open that door from the inside. They noticed that in each prison cell, there was a mop handle, coincidentally matching the distance from the window to the lock. The next challenge was figuring out how to turn the key. While working in the carpentry shop, Tim had seen a wood lathe. This sparked an idea in his mind. 
He immediately created a simple rotating shaft using a piece of wood with holes drilled at both ends. Then, he used screws to attach it to one end of the mop handle and fixed the key onto the rotating shaft. After successfully creating the tool, Tim passed it through the window and slowly controlled it to unlock the cell door. In this way, he solved the puzzle of opening the second door. However, at this moment, Tim noticed a guard standing on the wall, facing him through the window. Panicking, he accidentally dropped the key to the ground. Tim tried to stay calm, turned back into the cell, took out some chewing gum, and used the gum residue to attach the key to the mop handle to retrieve it. After a few attempts, he successfully retrieved the key. Although they had opened the second door, the crucial question was how to escape from the prison. Even if they managed to get outside, they would still be caught because of the prison uniforms they were wearing. They came up with a plan to steal the clothes of new prisoners because the prison received new inmates at regular intervals. The guards would then take their clothes and throw them into storage. Seizing the opportunity, Lee stole some of these civilian clothes to wear underneath their prison uniforms. Since they didn't know all the entrances and exits, Tim and Leonard decided to conduct a midnight reconnaissance mission to gather information about the prison layout. After trying several keys, they managed to unlock the door to their cell block's hallway and proceeded downstairs. On this floor, there were two doors at either end of the hallway, and there was also a guard room. Fortunately, the guard in the room was playing loud music, allowing Tim to try the keys. Just as he successfully unlocked the door, the music stopped. Tim quickly closed the door and ran to find a hiding spot. Since they didn't have enough time to return to their cell, they hurriedly hid inside a storage cabinet. However, the door did not have an inside handle, so they had to hold on to the door to keep it shut. The footsteps of the guard grew closer, and Leonard almost slipped, causing the door to move. Luckily, they weren't discovered. After the guard left, they resumed their attempt to open the doors. This time, Tim managed to unlock them with ease. With only two doors left, they were close to escaping. Just then, a guard was inspecting their cell block. Tim anticipated this situation and used a pillow to feign being asleep, successfully deceiving the guard. On the lower floor, despite trying many keys, Tim couldn't unlock the remaining doors. With no more time to spare, they had to retreat. When the guard descended the stairs, he noticed a few drops of water on the floor, which struck him as strange. After some thought, he continued. The next morning, the head warden woke a Tim up and noticed that Tim appeared restless, suspecting he hadn't slept all night. He decided to conduct a surprise room inspection to see what Tim had been up to. He threw all of Tim's belongings to the ground. Although Tim had hidden the keys very carefully, the head warden found an unusual object and picked it up. Fortunately, Tim quickly explained that it was a photo stand, which allowed him to avoid suspicion for the time being. However, their escape plan encountered another problem. Outside the prison's hallway, there was an automatic door operated by an electric motor, making it impossible for Tim to create a key for it. To address this issue, he chewed on rubber gum until his teeth were decaying enough for the dentist procedure, dental filling. When the guard took him to the hospital for dental work, Tim noticed that the control panel for the automatic door was located in the guard room. This meant that during their escape, there would need to be a guard on duty so they could sneak into the room and open the door from there. Tim also observed that the prison's perimeter wall was undergoing maintenance and the sharpshooters couldn't stand guard on the wall as usual. On their final day, Tim, Lee, and Leonard decided it was time to escape. They also tried to persuade Dennis and his friend to join them, but Dennis declined as he had grown accustomed to life in prison and didn't know what to do outside. As the end of the shift approached, the other wardens left, leaving only one guard in the guard room and a sharpshooter on the wall. It was their opportunity. Tim opened the door, releasing Tim and Leonard. They quickly put on civilian clothes. At that moment, the guard downstairs opened the storage cupboard to retrieve a plunger. Inadvertently, he knocked over an item that Tim had hidden inside. When the guard entered the restroom, the three men hid inside the cupboard. However, Tim realized that the coiled wire he had prepared earlier was missing. This wire could have helped them secure the door. With no time to spare, they had to use their hands to keep the door from opening. 
Unbeknownst to them, the guard was returning to the cupboard to put away the plunger. If they were caught, their chances of ever escaping would be ruined. In a desperate move, Dennis smashed the light bulb on the ceiling, causing an electrical malfunction. He then opened a window and started shouting for the guard's help. Seeing this, the guard changed his direction, going upstairs to check on the prisoners. Thanks to this diversion, the three men remained undetected. They quickly made their way to the guard room, which was unoccupied, allowing them to unlock the automatic door. They arrived at the last door. Through a small hole, they could see their freedom just beyond. But the problem was that Tim had never managed to open this particular door. He had to try all the different keys. Each passing second felt like an eternity to them. Tim tried all the keys one by one, but the last key still couldn't open the door. Tim felt disappointed and told the others to go back and wait for another opportunity. However, Leonard refused to go back. Without saying a word, he used a chisel to break the lock. The noise was loud and Tim feared that all their efforts would be in vain. After a while, they noticed a piece of wood near the door latch that had broken off, allowing them to successfully open the door. They put on their regular clothes and began moving outside. Tim used a mirror to keep an eye on the sniper on the fence above. When he saw the sniper turn away, they made their escape from the prison. Once outside, they were surprised to see one of the wardens who often bullied them. The three of them held their breath and walked past him without him suspecting a thing. They had successfully escaped. When the warden came back and checked the cells, he realized they were gone. He panicked and immediately triggered the alarm to initiate a search for them. However, it was too late because the three had already hailed a taxi with the money Dennis had helped them save over time. The taxi sped toward the border where they would finally find their freedom. This is the end of the movie. If you enjoy it, please like and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you for watching.